And welcome back to the show. Inner City Green Team is a not-for-profit organization that is environmental and focused on poverty alleviation as well as community development. Their team is creating a sustainable, scalable, and replicable recycling infrastructure at New York City Housing Authority, along with job creation and environmental protection at its very core. Now, joining us and sharing more, we've got the co-founders of Inner City Green Team, Bridget Vicente, and then also John Johnson and Welcome both to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'll do ladies first. And uh, Bridget, give me a little bit about this because I know that when we talk about uh, the work that you're doing, really uh, a, a heavy focus on environmental justice and uh, environmental and also poverty alleviation. Yeah, um, this is about um, focusing on the underserved communities that has not been given uh, priority to address environmental issues. And um, it was situation um, to, how, to how we became when after many years I had been putting my recyclables in the bin, when a, a, a kid that was sitting on the bins told, said, I don't know why you keep putting recyclables in there. They don't collect them. They put them in the trash and I threw my bamboozlement and frustration and just utter like uh, wonderment as to why this was and was he really telling me the truth until I actually literally saw my recyclables in, in the black garbage bag that was taken out of the bin, I needed answers. And this, how it, this is how Inner City Green Team became. It wasn't Inner City Green Team at that point, but I needed answers at that point. Yeah. And John, uh, take us through a little bit. You work with NYCHA. When we work with NYCHA, uh, we know that that can be sometimes a challenge to really get people to be responsible in the area of going green and recycling. But yet and still, your organization has really done a great job of uh, getting NYCHA to be an effective partner in helping you to do this? Well, well, Darren, I mean, just to give you some, a breakdown about NYCHA, NYCHA is the uh, largest the public housing authority in the country, uh, over half a million people called NYCHA home, one in 14, every New, uh, one in 14 New Yorkers are uh, NYCHA residents. And if NYCHA were a city on its own, it would be the 32nd largest city, uh, about the size of Miami or, or Atlanta. And uh, just to kind of back up a little regarding NYCHA and NYCHA residents uh, not recycling, uh, in fact, the inner city green team had to file a lawsuit to uh, pressure NYCHA to come into compliance uh, with uh, New York City's 1989 law requiring all apartment building, uh, or all New Yorkers in that matter, uh, to recycle. Uh, so NYCHA has been uh, behind the ball pretty much for 30 years, really not educating and empowering residents to really participate in the sustainability of New York City or, or the planning as a whole. Uh, what we've done, um, as Bridget mentioned, you know, she uh, was a resident or is a resident and has been working to kind of look at these issues and, and try to make a difference. And we came together some 11 years ago uh, to really focus on this issue and develop the very innovative uh, and uh, sort of responsive program that to the needs of NYCHA residents. It's a door-to-door -door program by which we go collect uh, at each door. And uh, it makes a lot of sense for the, the community and uh, Bridget probably can tell you a little more about that as we move forward in this interview. Yeah, I mean, talk about go to door to door. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute, Bridget. What was that like for you being able to go door to door, particularly when we know that sometimes people aren't so friendly? Yeah, <laughs> yeah tell me about it. Um, <laughs> yes, the, <laughs> the concept um, came from many years ago when I was doing some just I was doing some distribution with the NYCHA journals, and we were actually going around the city distributing the NYCHA journals door-to-door -door in different developments throughout the city. So that's where the idea came from. It's like, well, we can recycle door-to-door, uh, -door, but um, it, it wasn't as, as challenging as you would think. And I think the, the, the secret sauce was that I was a resident and, you know, coming to my fellow neighbors to address my concern and to get them to do this. It was 
they were a whole lot more receptive. I mean, there's been, you know, people that just don't want to do it. But as far as um, residents receiving the message, they are very um, open, open to it, open to the information. And like I say, just because, just because I live there too. Right. And John, what would you say for yourself would be that secret sauce when we talk about educating uh, NYCHA residents who, you know, sometimes, you know, they've got, we're talking about New Yorkers, first of all, right? Yeah. Yeah, we our own agenda, we're moving, we're doing this right. So recycling can sometimes be the last thing on the list, but how are you able to capture the hearts and minds of people and say, listen, this is something we need to do? Well, that's just it. I mean, one, NYCHA has been pretty much left off the table regarding sustainability in New York City for over 30 years. Like I said, when it comes to recycling, no outreach, no education, no real, you know, uh, energy that the city put into uh, really bringing NYCHA up to speed with respect to how to do this. And uh, this innovative program is saying, look, how do we create a program that actually works for residents? Uh, NYCHA tried a program called NYCHA Recycles. They put bins outside within clusters of development. They were far, few, you know, few and far in between. It's very inconvenient for residents to bring down their recyclables from, you know, uh, the building, take elevators, walk across campus. So it, it really was a big, big disincentive for folks to actually participate. But our program really brings it to where they are, right at their doorstep, at the front of their door. They put their recyclables out once a week. Uh, we collect each Friday. Uh, we're currently we're operating at the Wagner Houses. And, and every time they recycle, they get points. And those points, they can accumulate for various uh, prizes and, and raffles that we engage residents in as an incentive. Uh, so that really sort of encourages folks to get involved. But I think more importantly, uh, one of the things that we do to engage residents is our, what we call the real deal. That's R-E-A-L, that's the Resident Environmental Action Leaders Program. That's to train residents to really empower other residents uh, through uh, connecting with them uh, by going door to door, doing outreach at events, or just being your neighbor. Uh, that really sort of helps this program go organically and comes in with this kind of idea like, you know, you you know, a neighbor's telling you this about this and how important it is. And just really sharing that message of sustainability that most residents never had access to at, at night yet or the opportunity to participate in a program like recycling and sort of understanding their uh, role in it. Uh, just to give you a quick statistic, over 133 million pounds of recyclables are going to landfill unnecessarily each year. Uh, and that, uh, again, these landfills are far off as South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia, uh, where our waste is transported. And that 133 million pounds of recyclables can be diverted back into a productive uh, recycling stream uh, and reused and save the city money, as well as, you know, cut New York City's carbon footprint. So, you know, when residents hear about this, that empowers them to say, you have, you can make a difference. How do you impact climate change? How can you cut methane emissions? How can you help save trees? And residents say, I can do this with this simple action just by recycling out my door. Yeah. Bridget, for you, I mean, obviously a passion. And uh, I understand that this is something that really got instilled from you through your mom. Yeah, oh, bleak of me. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was a force. She was a force, sometimes forceful. And, um, you know, coming up, watching her move, and move people and move minds and move hearts. You know, as I matured watching her do this, I wanted to have that same effect on people, but I just didn't know what. I knew I wanted to serve, but I, I, I couldn't call it. And I, I asked, I asked the universe, I was like, send me my calling. And I didn't know when it was gonna happen, but when it did happen, I heard it. So, my mother is just a shining example of, you know, a community activist, and she definitely lives through me. Yeah. And John, for yourself, I mean, what's the motivation for you that really, or the thing that got into you to say, listen, I, I want to take it and, 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 and really help people to understand about um, living a green, you know, safe life? Well, you know, I was a recycling outreach coordinator for Growing YC's Office of Recycling Outreach and Education for over 10 years. And our mission was to work to improve residential recycling rates. In fact, that was uh, one of the reasons why I was on your show some years ago to sort of educate New Yorkers about the basics of, of recycling. And uh, what I like to call the, the meeting between Bridget and I, it's the 
the woman with a vision and the man on a mission. You know, my job was out there to really figure out ways to improve the, the environment. And the one simple way that I thought everybody could get involved was basically the recycling, right? It's the simplest way to do it. I mean, you know, we live in New York City. There's no pristine forest that we can, you know, go and uh, chain ourselves to from preventing loggers from chopping it down. But what folk, can folks do to really help to improve the environment? And it's a simple, basic thing that they can do right at their home. And we make it the most convenient poss as possible by coming to your door, uh, as we like to call it, a white glove concierge service. And, you know, this coming together, Bridget, with a vision, and my, you know, out there being in the streets with a mission and figuring out how can we come together and oper operationalize this you know, big idea. And that's what really sort of led us to the inner city green team and where we are today. Uh, so, you know, we've uh, been on this journey uh, again for about 11 years now. And uh, it's led us uh, to the point where we are now, where we actually are operating uh, in the development and with hopes of expanding throughout NYCHA's entire inventory of over 300 developments citywide. Yeah. Bridget, for you, uh, since starting this work and taking it on, talk to me about the impact that you feel that you've been able to make uh, since doing this. Being able to um, just uh, reach out to residents who normally would not have a way to reduce their carbon footprint and giving them a solution to be able to do that. It's just the Im impactful in that way and just making it easy for them and not making it complicated. Everybody's busy with their lives and just being able to assist them in, in helping in our environment is, is, has been wonderfully impacted the residents are engaged and we've collected tons of of recycling um initially when we were out in brownsville five years ago we collected over 18 tons and it's just you know a sign that they want to do this residents of new York city housing want to do this as opposed to the rhetoric that was that was put out that they don't want to do it, but you have to, you know, they have to have assistance in doing this. The information needs to be out there. So that's what inner city green team is. We have the structure, we have the information in order to create this wonderful program that can get, that can get NYCHA's recycling numbers up. And John, for people who want to get connected to you and the work that you do, how do they go about doing that? We are on Instagram, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook. Um, uh, on Twitter, it's at ICGT Works. And on Instagram, we're at inner city underscore green team. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash inner city green team. And for John, same question goes to you. Uh, well, one of the things I'd like to leave uh, you with, Darren, is the fact that uh, we have this sort of underlying theme as part of our programming. It's called BEAM, B-E-A-M, that's Black and Brown, Environmental Action Matters. Uh, if we look at NYCHA as a whole, of over 500,000 people, the impact that residents can have on the environment as a community. And to say that, uh, you know, dispel the myth that NYCHA residents don't care about uh, issues like this, they have more on their plate. That's totally uh, false. Uh, we see it every day. We see it in the people that we uh, engage with on a regular basis. We see the fact that we can actually hire folks uh, from the local community and really making a difference in people's lives. But as to also saying, you can actually as a community make a difference. If we can move 133 million pounds from the landfills to the recycling facilities, that's taking off uh, millions of dollars of taxpayer you know, dollars that we have to pay just to export our waste uh, to landfills, which is totally about $450 million a year now just to export our waste to landfills. How can we remove that material? Uh, not only are recyclables, but the organics and show people that you have power. That's like taking 200,000 cars off the road every year. It's nice to recycle, right? That's a big difference in terms of what we as a community, as black and brown people have, can, you know, can uh, uh, participate in this program and to show that you know, we do care and that we do have some power and we can make a difference. And uh, I think one thing that Bridget left off, if you really want to, reach out to us as well is uh, our website. I believe uh, innercityGreenTeam.org uh, is where they can find us. Yeah. Well, John, Bridget, I want to thank you both for coming and sharing. I think it's a lot of great work that is going on in our community in terms of environmental impact. You're doing that. And Bridget, uh, shout out as somebody who grew up in 
uh, Nitro Projects, St. Nick uh, Projects in Harlem. Uh, I'm very familiar of what it is to live and have a more you know, productive and healthy environment. And thank you for doing what you do. And uh, yeah. to you all. thank you. Also, I'd like to add, we have a, a crowdfunding campaign. Uh -huh. It's our waste, it's our waste uh, prevention program called the One Stop Drop Eco Environmental Center. And it's on sponsored through IOB. And the link is iobiobycom slash ICGT, where we are raising funds to create our one-stop drop uh, environmental center. Uh, well, thank you both for being with us. There you got the crowdfunding information and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Thank Darren. you so much, Darren. Pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>